uh, every business is going to have its share of challenges uh, that applies also to rabbit farming. Uh, with a big rabbit farm like ours, you will certainly going to experience a few challenges here and there. We have over 300 rabbits here on the farm uh, most of the time, though we do sell uh, some for meat and some to new farmers as breeding stock. Uh, however, most of the time, we quite have a huge number of bunnies here on the farm. Uh, challenge number one is going to be the cost of feed. Uh, you know that uh, rabbits literally share most of the ingredients with other livestock uh, like for hay uh, which contributes also a high percentage in the pellet uh, then there is some in the pellet also there is wheat there is uh, some corn so all these you know that the prices for these components are really high on the market and they keep changing day by day so this really becomes challenging if you're feeding a huge farm uh, of rabbits like we do here. Uh, you find that you're going to struggle to uh, get the funds to buy these high, highly priced feeds. So that is really a major problem. And this actually pushes many people out of this farming business uh, because uh, you find that you're putting in a lot of money and of course, at the start, uh, the business will not be returning uh, so much. So you find that people give up even before uh, they can start to realize a lot of returns from their investment. Uh, with high cost of feed comes with uh, uh, limited uh, funds. Uh, otherwise, uh, one would be able to afford the feeds. But you find that most of the farmers have uh, issues with funds and also accessing uh, financial help from these finance institutions uh, like banks uh, because uh, these are going to require uh, someone to have a security for the money and most of the youths, they don't have this kind of security to provide to these banking institutions to be able to give them financial help. So you're going to find that uh, you're going to find it very difficult for you to access any financial help because these institutions have not provided avenues to give uh, soft uh, loans to rabbit farmers and generally to the agricultural sector. Uh, normally, the people that uh, get this financial help, they are these big shots uh, that have a lot of uh, wealth in terms of uh, properties uh, which they can give to these financial institutions in terms of uh, uh, security for the, the, um, the money that they have been granted. Uh, the third challenge uh, is going to be the uh, breeds, uh, accessibility to quality uh, rabbit breeds. You know that uh, especially on the African continent, the people largely rare indigenous uh, rabbit breeds. And these are the dwarfs, they are rabbits which don't gain a lot of weight. So that is a challenge is that now you're having to feed them uh, very expensive feeds and yet the conversion of the feed to, to weight uh, and muscles is very low. So you find that you're feeding the rabbit for the longest time uh, when uh, gaining the minimum or the minimal weight. So that's a challenge, uh, although there are some farmers who are coming up, uh, like ourselves, who have tried to invest in buying purebred uh, rabbits, which are highly priced. And, and of course, now when it comes into, if you're having issues with finances, you will not be able to afford uh, to acquire these quality breeds. Uh, however, we what we are doing here on the farm, we are trying to subsidize. Uh, the prices for these uh, quality breeds so if you're getting from us you will rest be assured that uh, you're getting a better uh, rabbit uh, the fourth uh, problem is going to be uh, the market i believe all rabbit farmers at some point they have felt like they will not get the market for their uh, rabbit farm products 
uh, this is the most uh, asked questions uh, here on the channel and on all other social media platforms of ours is how do I sell my rabbits and we also have had very many people reaching out to us uh, to buy rabbits from them uh, which some we have done uh, but also we are not able to buy from everyone as uh, this we need to have uh, to match the demand which we have to, to be able to buy uh, rabbits from outside our farm. Uh, though we are doing everything possible to support every rabbit farmer that is near us uh, to ensure that we can uh, link them to the market that we have. I also believe that if we come together as, as rabbit farmers, we are able to meet these huge uh, market demands for especially rabbit meat. Problem that that people are facing when it comes to the market for rabbit meat, the issue with supply, uh, consistency in terms of the supply. So you're going to reach out to a hotel and let's say you have 50 rabbits and then the hotel will tell you, all right, we we're willing to include a rabbit meat on our menu, but maybe we will need about five rabbits a month, uh, five rabbits a week. So for how long can you supply uh, that hotel, uh, these rabbits, before your stock runs out? And remember your next stock is going to be available in about three months. So that's normally the challenge. But if you manage the consistency in terms of the supply, and now this also goes back to your breeding program to ensure that you're having rabbits uh, being delivered on your farm literally on a weekly or two weeks uh, space so that way is that you're going to have a rabbit which are just uh, growing on the farm so one group is is ready for slaughter another group is going to be ready for slaughter the next week and the next week and the next week something like that so as you make your breeding program in that way then you are able to maintain uh, the supply i think we will do another video a detailed video on how you can make your breeding program to ensure consistency in the breeding and deliver of kits on your farm i think that's something that we can make to just share with you what we have done uh, for us on the farm uh, the other problem is the knowledge gap uh, in regards to rabbit farming however we we are here trying to bridge this and also there are so many other uh, people that are doing this kind of content uh, here on youtube from across the african continent from nigeria to ghana to kenya to uganda to zambia to malawi across the african continent and uh, across the world uh, people in the united states people in the uk people in australia people in russia we are having uh, all these people create content regarding uh, rabbit farming which is a good thing uh, however the challenge now that we have is going to be uh, in terms of uh, the internet access uh, because now for one to be able to actually see uh, this kind of content that we put here uh, you will need internet access and most of the african countries uh, the internet prices is still high so that also comes back to the financial issue which we had uh, because now people are, can't afford to to spend a, a dollar or two on an internet uh, connection then uh, the gap still stands uh, however it's a good thing that we have more people coming up and creating uh, awareness about how someone can actually make a living out of uh, rearing rabbits how you can actually provide a consistent supply of of meat uh, to your family through rearing rabbits it's actually a good thing that uh, people are doing here on youtube so 
uh, kudos to everyone uh, who is creating content and of course everyone who comes here and watch our content because if we put out this content out there and the next day we come to it there's no one who has viewed it we don't think we will get the motivation to keep on doing this uh, the other challenge that uh, we are facing uh, in the rabbit uh, farming uh, journey here in Uganda is uh, uh, veterinary services and uh, medicines for rabbits. Uh, this is an area which is uh, really a problem because uh, we don't have a lot of vet uh, that know how to care for the rabbits and even the medication uh, to give the bunnies uh, for these uh, diseases like uh, mange, uh, like snuffles, uh, like blot, Th those kind of diseases we you can't actually find uh, something that has been done specifically for a rabbit. Uh, when you go to these vet shops, they are going to suggest to you to use uh, something that is being used for chicken and something being used for goats. To some extent, they have been able to work but they do not do a good job uh, when it comes to the efficiency on how fast can uh, this medicine which is meant for a totally different uh, animal uh, be able to work uh, on, a, on a rabbit especially the most common is is uh, these vet shops giving you medicine that is meant for chicken uh, to treat your rabbits uh, the vet uh, themselves, when they come to the farm, sometimes they don't know what uh, problem your rabbit is having. And remember, when your rabbit is having a sickness, the faster you act, the higher the chances that your bunny is going to survive. So that's a really a big challenge um, that we are experiencing here. Uh, the other challenge is with uh, predators. Uh, predators like dogs a cat and of course here we are talking about uh, stray dogs stray cats if you're having a dog at home or if you're having your cat at home and you have introduced it to your bunnies uh, there is literally not going to be a problem with you having a bunny and and a dog uh, in the same compound so that shouldn't be a challenge however what we are talking about is these stray dogs and stray cats uh, of course uh, the rats, uh, those are really a problem. If those get into your farm, they are really going to treat you badly when it comes to to the new bunnies. The rats normally eat the day old. When you're building your farm, especially the cages, try to assure that they are almost rat proof. You don't leave uh, huge spaces uh, that can allow a rat to pass through. Uh, even with your mesh uh, which you put on the sides and on the floor ensure that it's small enough not to to allow a rat to pass through so those are the predators um, the dogs of course you would need to provide uh, an enclosure uh, for your for your rabbit's uh, cage uh, then secondly you need to lift it off the ground uh, ensure that it is raised at uh, some height uh, which cannot allow a dog uh, to reach your bunnies uh, for the cats ensure that the mesh that we are, you are using is strong enough uh, for them not to be able to pass through uh, the other problem is with uh, with hay uh, remember hay should constitute 80 percent of your rabbit feed uh, but in most parts of africa it's very difficult to access a very quality, high quality hay. Uh, now, high quality hay, we're looking at something like alfalfa. We're looking at something like Timothy uh, hay. We're looking at something like Chloris Diana hay. We're looking at something like Syndrosima. We're looking at uh, Broccalia mulata. Those kind of, of grasses that are high in crude protein it's going to be very difficult for you to access uh, that kind of hay. Uh, this is because uh, people have not embraced uh, growing grasses uh, as a business. So the 
hay that is most common is just from guys who just find a bush of grass and cut it and dry it. So that's what you're going to find uh, most of the time. Uh, uh, types that we have just uh, talked about, it's going to be way expensive uh, because it's scarce, uh, because of the limited um, uh, availability. So the very few who have, who have it, they are going to try and sell it uh, very expensive. Uh, you can address this by, if you have land, uh, you can purchase some seeds and then you plant your own grass. Uh, that way you're going to uh, cut the cost of feeding uh, if you're growing your own hay. And also you're going to ensure that uh, you're actually feeding hay that has nutritional value to your bunnies. Uh, the other problem is with the weather. Uh, you know that uh, Africa has quite some uh, changing weather, uh, especially what affects uh, rabbits most is not the rainy or the cold weather uh, because rabbits have fur. They can pretty do well in cold weather. Of course, if it goes really extreme, then... Of course, you're going to have a problem if it is really extreme in terms of the coldness. You will have to, to mitigate and, and see how your bunnies can survive. Uh, however, what is very dangerous is the very hot weather. You're going to find that uh, your bucks, uh, your male rabbits are going to be very inactive uh, during very hot seasons when it is super hot your male uh, rabbits will not be able to give birth so that becomes a challenge so during these hot seasons you will not actually be breeding uh, because the males will be knocked off and they cannot work properly so that's a really challenge uh, that we have experienced uh, when it gets really hot. Uh, you breed your rabbits. At the end of 30 days, you get nothing. Uh, if you're so lucky, you get one or two bunnies out of a litter. So it's, it's really a challenge. Uh, however, it doesn't last a long time. So it doesn't go uh, like a long spell. But still, that strains your your breeding program. Uh, so that's that's one challenge, and some people don't know this. Uh, so we have had farmers who call us and say, "But now you sold to us a rabbit, uh, but now during this time the rabbit is not giving birth." So you have to explain to them uh, that sometimes when it is very hot. Uh, the male rabbits will literally not be able to do anything. Uh, so when you breed them uh, with your rabbits, uh, you will get nothing. And that's a reality that you have to, to agree to. Uh, if you have watched this video this far, please consider giving it a like. Uh, subscribe to the channel to get notified when we upload uh, the next video. Uh, thanks for watching guys. We do put here videos about rabbit farming uh, every week. So endeavor to subscribe so that you don't miss uh, out on the next video. Uh, thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.